It's the book that came out of nowhere and changed my life. One day, I really did just wake up with the itch and this fear that I was running out of time. If I didn't write a story, I would, I would die and none of my stories would ever be shared and my characters would just live in my head. Hi and hello, it's Kristen from Kristen and Her Books. Welcome back to my channel, I'm glad you're here and today I am excited to be bringing you my writing process tag. So. This is not a tag video channel, but I have been incredibly blessed to be tagged by so many wonderful YouTubers lately, and so I've had some videos to film for it, and honestly, I have not been complaining. Basically, the writing process tag video asks a few questions about your writing process, so I thought that to kind of set the tone, I would do it in my writing gear. I don't know if I'm the only person who wears writing gear or not, but like, I have this head wrap thing, which I like to wear to keep my head back when I'm writing, and then my writing gloves, and I believe these are from Story Arts, they're Alice in Wonderland. So when I write, I just think it's really awesome to wrap myself in words as kind of an encouragement. And so, please enjoy the writing gear as I answer these questions for you. I was tagged for this by Sophie Snow. She is an author tuber and booktuber who's fairly new but doing so well for herself. And her videos are excellent quality, very interesting, and full of bookish and writing love. So be sure to check her out because she's great and I'm glad that I found her. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the questions and there are a lot of them, so I'm gonna try to answer them as fast as I can. First one, what genres do you write? So, mainly contemporary within the genres of middle grade and young adult, although I am planning a young adult thriller, but at the moment, mainly contemporary. With like contemporary romance as being a little bit in the YA. Question number two, what setting gets you the most productive? I think that where I write best would be just at my desk with a candle and some fairy lights and my writing gear and a cup of coffee. And all of that is necessary, but if I do not have my earbuds in to block out the rest of the world, then I still won't be productive. Those earbuds really like save my life. <laughs> But yeah, my desk is my best spot. Although I find that whenever I'm getting stuck, if I move over to my desk chair and write in a notebook, then that helps me too. Question number three. If you have multiple story ideas, how do you go about picking which one to start first? I think, oh, well, I always have a lot of story ideas. I have so many and they're all like screaming at me, like, write me, Kristen, write me. <laughs> Um, but how I picked my last one is I thought about what I felt physically capable of doing, um, and that was the middle grades. So I had just finished like a really dark literary mental illness story, and I wanted to let it sit, but I wanted to start a new project, and so I just wanted that bright, happy friendship story, which ended up having dark undertones too, but still... <laughs> So yeah, definitely um, kind of going off what I feel at the moment, but then sticking with it. Number four, do you outline? Yes, I do. Now I definitely outline more and maybe I could do a video one time that kind of shows my outline process, but I start off with character arcs and then I do um, like major scenes I know I want to include and I attach them to different story beats and then I add like in-betweens between the beats and what needs to happen and have at least four to five sentences if not more of what I want to happen in each scene. So that's something that I feel like I've kind of evolved into though. The first novel I ever wrote I didn't outline at all. Um, I maybe got halfway through it and had to give myself a small idea of an outline, but even still, no. So yeah, that's a new development in my writing life, but yes, I do outline now. Number five, do you start your first draft with pen and paper, typewriter, or a computer? I was going to say computer, but actually my middle grade novel, I wrote the first page out in my writer's notebook. So who knows? Question number six, what do you do to get through writer's block. I haven't had, well, no. I think you just do it. There's this great Alexa Dawn quote. It's probably not her quote, but I'm just gonna say it is. And she's, she's just like, write the damn book. So I just do it. Um, 
I just push through. And I feel like normally I know whenever I'm at the point where I'm affecting my mental health versus like I'm being lazy and I distinguish between that and I just write. I make a to-do list of what I need to write next, revise next, and I do it. And I don't know if there's any other way to get through writer's block but to do that, honestly. So, next question. Do you format your project from the beginning or worry about that later? I feel like I format it from the beginning. Next question. Do you edit as you go or when you're finished with the first draft? I definitely edit after the first draft. Um, the first draft is like this beautiful creative explosion where words are flowing and I'm living my best life and I'm happy and I'm creating. And then comes the after that the revision and the editing when I'm basically dying. Um, so yeah, I'd rather save that and have it be its own beast than have the editing interfere with the creative process. Yeah. Next question. After finishing your draft, how long do you give it a break before you start going back? Um, I know that people say that you should give it at least a month. And in the past, I have given it at least a month. But I found that only waiting at least a month actually really damaged how I worked on my first manuscript, which I'm revising now. I think that I should have given it longer because when I came back to it, I revised it once already, but it was like cosmetic editing because I was still too attached to it. It was the first thing I ever wrote. And so I was like, no, baby, you're perfect. I won't harm you. I won't add things from you or remove your precious words um yeah i'm over that now it's been some more time and now i know that we gotta rip things out of that sucker but i didn't separate myself from it enough so i think in the future at least two months if not three is how long i need to let it sit next question is there something that you prefer to do to get you through writing um, I like to have coffee. Like, if it's a bad session or something, it's not that I need to get through it. I mean, having a goal maybe helps me do that. Like, I'm going to stop once I do this. Um, but I wouldn't say that I do need something to get through it. Like, this is my life source, my very breath, writing, right? Even when it sucks. Sometimes I need help getting started to do it because I know that when I'm going to sit down, it's going to take all of me. Um, and that having a ritual and routine to get into it helps me. So putting on the writing gloves, putting on my little headband, getting my coffee, lighting the candle. It's all these rituals that set up a mindset that helps me get into the writing zone. Next question. Do you schedule your writing sessions? Um, I don't really. I normally get to writing at around 7 p.m. ish every day and try to write for an hour. It doesn't work because life is super messy, um, but I can always count on the weekends at least having a three hour time span where I know I'll be writing usually around 11 a.m. So, yeah, I'm a midday flamingo when it comes to my writing. I definitely do my best work, like, in the afternoons, which I know is super uncommon, but that's just me. Next question. Do you have, do you have word count or chapter goals for your writing sessions? Honestly, yes. The way that I have written my last two novels were, like, super fast, and... Um, I think it's because they were my first and I was like creatively exploding, but so I would sit down for an hour and I would be happy if I got a thousand words. So maybe it was more of like write for an hour, but there were some days during the weekends where I had word goals for 3000. That was for drafting though. Now that I'm on, um, revising, I don't really have a word count goal because I feel like it varies so much. I try to revise a chapter a day. Question number 13, are there anything any quirky things that you do to make writing more fun? Um, I sometimes take dance sessions. Like, if I'm getting kind of, if I've been sitting for too long, I'll play Don't Stop Me Now by Queen and just have like the most epic dance session. I don't really need it to make writing more fun. I mainly need it for like a little physical break, but it does make it more fun, I guess. 
Num question number 14, do you work on multiple projects at one time? I tried that, it doesn't work for me right now. Maybe I'll try it again one day. Um, next question, how often do you research what you're writing? It just depends if I need it, but usually I do. Um, I had to research a lot about making bottle rockets for my middle grades novel, as well as comets and cancer. So yeah, I will research as often as necessary. Next question. How do you organize your projects? Scrivener. Excellent writing app has scene by scene abilities to really track and move your scenes around as you write, as well as this great nifty cork board type arranging thing. I just, I love Scrivener. And then outside of using Scrivener, I do have my writing notebook. Um, it's not organized, but it's like my own little beautiful mess where my story ideas go and writing whenever I'm not at a computer and full of character arcs and things like that. So yeah. Next question. Do you reward or punish yourself for not achieving your writing goals? Um, no, I definitely punish myself, but it's not like anything weird. It's just like a mental thing. If I set a goal and I don't achieve it, then I will start to question my self-worth, which is its own type of mental punishment. Um, yeah. Question number 18. Are there any works similar to your projects that you look for inspiration and comparison? That's a funny question. Actually, yes, definitely. Um, my first novel, Alley Unraveling, that I'm re revising right now, is very similar to Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. So I keep The Bell Jar out on my desk while I'm writing and sometimes look back at it for inspiration, encouragement, um, a reminder that I'm, <laughs> I'm on the right track, sort of, but mainly inspiration because it's so nicely done. For my middle grades draft that I finished, I did the same thing for a book called The Year We Fell From Space was kind of my comparable title that I would look back to. Question number 19, how early do you look for editors? I don't think I'm going to look for an editor. I would really like to give this whole traditional publishing thing a great try anyways. And so looking for the agent is the thing. And then eventually they find a publisher and that publisher has an editor. So that's where I hope to get to. If you finished a first draft, tell us about how you felt afterwards. I remember finishing Ali Unraveling, my first ever novel, and just crying. And even now when I think about it, I do kind of just cry too because it's the book that came out of nowhere and changed my life. I had the beginning of the story sitting on my keyboard for months and I didn't know what to do with it. And then one day I really did just wake up with the itch and this fear that I was running out of time. And if I didn't write a story, I would I would die and none of my stories would ever be shared and my characters would just live in my heads. And so then I did it. And Ali Unraveling proved to me that at least I could. At least I could finish a first draft. And yeah, so I felt relieved to get the story out of my head and also more satisfied and fulfilled than I have in anything else in my whole life. I guess that's just how you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? All right, and the last question or the last part of this tag is to tag someone else. So I have picked three people that I want to tag for this tag. The first one would be Scrap Paper Scribbler. So uh, Leanne, you are an inspiration to me as with your writing. You treat yourself so kindly, but are still so diligent. And these fantastical worlds that you've created are so wonderful. I can't wait to read your stories. And I'm so happy to be able to call you my booktube author tube friend. So I, you consider yourself tagged. I'm gonna stop gushing, but I am infinitely grateful for your friendship. The next person I want to tag is Nina Marley Scott. She does a lot of screenwriting, and I found her way, way back when I started this channel, and it was only AuthorTube, and she's so funny. I love to watch her videos, and I would love to hear more about your writing process. So 
consider yourself tagged. And the last person I would like to tag for this video is Walisimo. Same thing, I found her channel whenever I was strictly authortube and I enjoyed watching her vlogs through NaNoWriMo and Walisimo, consider yourself tagged. <laughs> All right, there you have it. That is the writing process tag. Those are the things that I do to make this thing called writing happen. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button. In the comments below, let me know what you do to write and maybe answer some of these questions for yourself. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And I would like to give a new subscriber shout out to Tiffy E. Thank you for subscribing, Tiffy E. I hope you like this video. And for everyone else, thanks for stopping by. Bye.